Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kick Kick Coffee Break, and I am back with something a little bit new for you guys. I am going to be casting for the first time a three versus three here. And I'll be honest, I don't even know where to start with this. So let's go ahead and start by introducing the teams. Over here on the right side, we have our red Zerg player, Dreamlines, our teal player, Ellie, Ella, whatever. And down here in the bottom right, we do have Beauty, who is our blue Terran player, who is the one who sent me this game. Over on the left-hand side, we do have the Patriarch as our purple Zerg player, our yellow Protoss Nevanak, 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 whatever, and our orange Zerg player, Wittigo. <laughs> Wittigo, I don't know how to pronounce any of these names. Now, for the record, I'm just going to say this now. This production tab will be up for about five seconds, and then I'm going to take it off as soon as anything really you know, big starts ramping up. Because look at all the useless information we have there. There is so much crap there. I don't even know what to do with all that info. So I have not yet casted a 3 versus 3 before, and I thought it would be kind of an interesting experiment. I came across Beauty's profile on Facebook, and uh, she is a very, very high level Masters player in 1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s. She can play Terran and Protoss, I believe. So a very talented player. And I thought it'd be fun to try to feature some new people out there. My, my real goal is just kind of get around and go ahead, get everybody involved that I can. And it's just fun for me to be able to cast all sorts of new people for you guys. So I don't know if there's a way I can change the color screen scheme so it's easier to tell who's who. There we go. So we're going to have all of our red players on the right side and all of our blue players on the left side. That'll be make it a little bit easier to differentiate teams, at least, in battles. But I do apologize. I will not be able to differentiate players all that easily. So it looks like we are going for pretty standard play out of our two Terran players, both of them walling off their ramps, which is pretty important when you have two Zerg players on the other team, and especially so in threes, because rushing is so, so popular in threes. It is ridiculous. You know, a lot of the time you'll see one player rush like we do see here. We have the Patriarch, who's coming from the bottom left, coming in to rush Beauty. However, I don't know if he'll be able to do too much because we do have a marine out on the field. Just needs to bring up some SCVs to repair this wall. The wall's getting kind of dangerous to be low right there. That supply people down to less than 100 health. But once again, the marine is doing just enough damage. That wall got very, very close. And it is repaired in time, I think. But the other, the top supply people is going down as well. So a little bit of action early on in the game. But it does look like it is going to hold. This supply people is burning down very, very quickly. There is an orbital command up, but not wanting to use that mule to repair rather get the mineral income for it and beauty does manage to have a nice hold off there at the front wall in the meantime we do have a couple of zerglings coming into the top base of dreamlines however dreamlines has zerglings of her own there to defend now i don't know if these are all female players i do know that beauty plays i believe in an all-female clan and if not an all-female clan there are quite a few so i'm just going to kind of mix up he's and she's i apologize if any of these players do watch this and I get it wrong, just let me know in the comments or something and I will go ahead and fix that. A little bit of a Zergling engagement, Zergling on Zergling battle, uh, witty, little, witty lines, whatever, and uh, dream lines did get into a little bit of a battle there, but no real damage sustained, and now it looks like we are going to be having a push out from the red team over into the top left base of witty go. A lot of Zerglings and a couple of Hellions coming in, but there is a Spine Crawler here to defend, which is exactly what Wittigo needs. However, it does look like there's quite a bit in this base already for the red team. That Spine Crawler is going down fairly quickly, and not really much reinforcement coming in from the blue player's opponent, uh, blue player's allies. It looks like there is one Hellion and a very, very little health, but a lot of drones going down here. A second Spine Crawler is coming up, and Queen has died as well. So now there is really nothing to defend until this Spine Crawler gets up, which it has now. But in the meantime, all of the drones for Wittigo, all the four drones, have gone down except for a spare few right there. And no real counter attack being mounted by the blue team either. It looks like the blue team content with just kind of sitting around, walling up here. Now here comes a zealot and a few sentries coming up, but that's going to be very, very late. And uh, Witty Go up here just has already done, got taken so much damage in this engagement. Just leaving one Zergany behind to wail away at this building here. But with the armor of one and only doing five damage per hit, that is going to take forever. And I can only assume, yep, there we go, that one Zergling does get cleaned up. We do have one drone left on the field. So would he go pretty much out of the game for at least another five or ten minutes here until she can get back up into it. That was a lot of damage sustained. 
We do have a couple of zealots and sentries moving along the lower portion of the map, but they will not be able to get into this wall as there are quite a few marines back here to defend. I believe that's seven marines and that little group there. We do have a, a semi wall off from our Protoss player, but it is unneeded at this point because, I mean, there, there's plenty of forces right there to defend. A fast expand did come out. I do like giving the Protoss player the fast expand in threes, the easy expansion, I should say. Because Protoss players can be, their, their units are so much more powerful than Zerg units. I mean, I, I'm not calling OP or anything, but Zerglings, 35 health, Zealot, 150. So if the Protoss player can get that extra income in the early game, he can get his tech up a lot faster, and his higher tech units are going to be able to do a little bit more damage than the higher tech units of the Zerg. The Zerg, as long as they can keep on pumping out these lower level units, normally can just get the surrounds and make, the, make it all around tough for the other team. Kind of like what we're seeing here. Ooh, a little bit of lag there. Must be a lot going on. Um, kind of like what we see here. A lot of Zerg on the field. We're going to try to get the surround on these stocks. However, very nice force field coming out of Nivanek and able to uh, really just make it so there's only one angle of engagement. However, there are a lot of range units on the field as well for the red team. And the red team is able to clean that up. And Wittigo already has left the game. There was nothing left for that poor fellow to do up there. Now it looks like the red team is going to try to push in through the wall of the Protoss player here. They do have quite a few forces here. There are even a couple of Banshees in here for a lot of DPS. Some are focusing down the Banshees, but in the meantime, all the Zealot, uh, all the Zerglings, and, and uh, Hellions, and Marauders, Wailing way at the Roaches and the Stark in the front wall. The front wall has now has small the pylon that was right here. Did go down so the red forces can get into the base now. However, a lot of the Marines and Marauders deciding to focus fire down this pylon for Nevonic instead. Depowering both these gateways. So now these gateways have no power. I do not know. There are three more gateways back over here in the main for Nevonic. But a lot of damage sustained there. Now all the Hellions do get up into the main base of Nevonic and are going to be able to take out a lot of probes because there is nothing left back up here to defend. In the meantime, our blue our blue Protoss player is trying to fall back a little bit. But no, noticing a little bit too late that their Hellions main. The Hellions are going to get sacked, but a lot of units dead right there. A lot of probes did die. And now Nevonic is really going to have no real income, and it looks like Ellie's Hellions are now going to rush on out of the base. And both these players, both of the blue team players, I should say, in a lot of trouble at this point in time. It looks like a few of these Hellions are going to come up here. There's nothing left to defend these few drones. Now, the only reason for those of you who do not play team games to kill these drones off is that the, dr the minerals that these drones harvest do go to the other players at this point. So, that was just a little bit of extra income that our other two players were getting, and as you see, Ellie just kind of popped in there, killed off those drones, and then got out. Now, I do not really agree with this move out right now. The blue team just doesn't really have the forces to try to push out and take out another player. I do understand the logic of it, though, because it is currently two versus three, and they really, really need to try to cripple one of the players. It looks like Devonic was trying to walk right past the middle base, but he's not going to get there, but with all the tanks and the marauders here, the Starks are just going to get cleaned up instantly, there are actually three Banshees as well, coming in to give chase to these units, and this marauder, oh, I mean, uh, pardon me, this immortal is going to fall almost immediately, taking so much damage from the marines in that battle. And now, the blue team is in a lot of trouble, because they just lost the entire Protoss' army, save one Stalker, and, I mean, the red team is just going strong, as always. We have our, our Zerg player with two bases. Well, I guess there's only one team with two bases. Yep, and there's the lead from Devonic. That was the Protoss player. And the Patriarch has also left the game. So that was quite, kind of an interesting experience. Capping a threes there. That is something I have not yet done. And in the end, it really comes down to which, teams, uh, which team goes down one player first. In this game, we did see the red team able to take down uh, Wittigo up here in the top left corner and after that happened the blue team just could not keep up with the unit production of the red team. Let's see if I can get the colors back on here. I can never really remember the hotkeys for this. Uh, yeah, I have no idea what the hotkeys are. Apparently I can turn on and off health bars there player colors. I don't know what I'm doing. Thank you for joining me here on the coffee cast. I will have a link to beauty's profile down in the comments, please go and like her Facebook. She has been very, very kind to me thus far, and I hope that I will continue to get replays out of her. She has been a great person, and I would really appreciate it if you all went out and supported her. And until next time, folks, this is Coffee Break, signing out.